In this video series, I'll cover how to integrate Unreal into a VFX and CG animation pipeline, rendering out our hero CG in Maya, integrating this with an environment in Unreal, and comping these renders together in Nuke. For the Unreal environment, we'll be using the super awesome Matrix City sample, which you can get for free on the Epic Marketplace. The approach we're taking here is modeled after in-camera VFX with LED volumes made famous by ILM's work on The Mandalorian. There, the actors and props on set are real, and the background environment is made in Unreal Engine. We'll take a similar approach for our linear animation workflow, using Unreal for its ability to render massive environments, and seamlessly combining that with our hero animation in Maya. In this first video, we'll begin with how to create a 360 HDR panorama render out of Unreal to use for image-based lighting in Maya. So beginning with Unreal 5, they have a new ability to output panoramic 360 renders, which is cool. Let me mention that Unreal 5.1 currently has a bug with the panoramic render where it doesn't work. That's a known issue that's on their bug tracker, which they said that actually they've fixed it, but it's not going to be released until 5.1.1. So for now, for panoramic rendering, you got to do it in 5.0. We're going to need to load in some plugins for that. So I'm going to go here and type in render. This is a nice little trick, by the way. All over the place in Unreal, you can type in uh, something that you're kind of filtering for, and then I see here, um, I don't see it there. Let's type in a different word. I'm uh, going to type in pass. There we go. So, movie render queue additional render passes that needs to be on, and then in addition to that, we're, the panoramic thing is going to complain if we don't turn this on. So, if we come into edit, and then project settings and type in alpha, alpha, spelled wrong, alpha. We need to make sure enable alpha channel support and post-processing is set to linear color space only. And both of those are going to ask you to restart Unreal, so you can just do them both together and restart one time, and then we're ready to go. You're going to need to have a level sequence here, so you just click on this button and add a level sequence. I already did add this one down here, and then you're going to click on the camera button to add a camera actor, and you can see I've got the camera actor placed right here in the scene, and it's sort of set to be, as you can see here, kind of right in the middle of the street, which is where you'd want to place a camera if you were doing HDR capture in real life, is you kind of want to be away from a whole, like um, objects to avoid problems of parallax. And so that's what I did here. I placed it in here. And I want to change one thing is on the lights, I want to turn off the sunlight. And that way from my HDR, you can see here they've got skylight and they've got a directional light. I'm actually going to export out this directional light from Unreal into Maya and use it there. And so I only need to recreate the skylight in Unreal, which I'm going to get from this panoramic image that I'm writing out. So I come to the skylight, I want to turn it off. And in order for that to work in the render, I have to turn it off. I can't turn it off here because that's just going to affect my view here. I need to come into rendering visible and turn off there. So with that, I'm ready to click on this little render button here. And I'm going to come into the settings for the render queue. And this is how it is by default. I need to change that around and render out an EXR and panoramics. So as a quick start for that, we're just going to go to Still Ultra, which is a preset that comes with Unreal 5. And so I'll just click that in here and already I'm getting an EXR sequence instead. That's nice. Um, I'm getting uh, these settings here, which are nice. What I'm going to do for these settings here, these are all just kind of quality settings, is under the anti-aliasing, I'm going to change the temporal count to 1 because 
we don't have movement in this and so that's not really going to help us much. Temporal has to do with time and I'm also going to come over to here and turn off the LOD 0 and the HLODs and this is again making it easier on the render to render out this mammothly gigantic scene so that's for that purpose but what we really need to do in order to get panoramic rendering to work is one, come into here and turn on panoramic rendering. And then because of that, we're going to just delete the deferred rendering. Otherwise, it's going to give us two different renders, one panoramic and one regular. And then I need to also come into here and turn on color output. And in there, check this box. That's going to disable the tone curve, meaning that it's not going to apply the tone curve to the EXR image, which you definitely don't ever want to do because then it makes it not scene linear and you always want to say about EXRs in scene linear. One last thing is in the output, we need to make sure that for a panoramic lat long image, the aspect ratio is two to one. And so we have 4K here on the left at uh, 4096, but to make it 2K on the right, or in the Y channel, we need to change this to 2048. And then we have the correct aspect ratio. So with that, we're going to click on accept and then click on render local, and then that'll render it out. And when it's done rendering, we can just click on this little output thing. It'll pop us into the directory where it's rendered it out and I'll just take this and drag this into Nuke. You'll see that this looks really, really overexposed. And that's because at the moment, while Unreal does have really nice exposure controls, they, for some reason, aren't working with the panoramic render. So you're gonna have to set them manually in Nuke. That's not a problem. We also have an exposure control in Nuke. So just tab exposure and I can set that and let's try minus five and take a look and it looks pretty good. Well, let's do minus six, go a little, little darker. But really it doesn't matter because I can set this in Nuke, I can set it in Maya. Maya also has exposure controls on the dome light where we're gonna be applying this. And an EXR file itself has all this high dynamic range of data, it can store up to 25 stops. So all the data is there. We just have to dial it into whatever we want and we're golden. So um, either wherever you do it and also if you change your mind later, it's all good. The other thing that you'll notice here is that the colors are off from what we had in Unreal. And let me just jump back in here and you can see, like look at the color of this building here behind us here and then if I jump back to Nuke you'll see that it's kind of weirdly overly red and that's because while Unreal uses the ACES tone mapper to view things just like we're using the ACES tone mapper in Nuke it its working space is not ACES CG like it is in Nuke and other programs that use ACES its working space is linear sRGB so when we read this in, we need to do a conversion on our input transform for a read node and go from linear sRGB to ACES. And then now the colors are all looking correct. So we can save this out with a write node and we're ready to bring this into Maya. So here I am in Maya. I'm going to make a dome light, go over and load an image into it. And you can see here that I have a pano that I've written out from Nuke, where I've written out in ACES format, and I've changed the exposure as we just saw. And so therefore in the write node, you need to write ACES CG in the output transform for the right node. And then I open that up and I need, right now it's reading it in as raw, which is correct. And that's correct with our OCIO config because 
since the working space of Maya is ACCG, doing raw, which means doing nothing, takes ACCG and brings it into ACCG. In other words, there's nothing that needs to be done. So the next thing we need to do is get some of this reference stuff out of Unreal. We need to export things from Unreal into Maya. And specifically what we're going to be doing is going to get some of this geometry. We're going to get a camera from Unreal just so we can see through the camera at the geometry and basically see where things are at so we know where to put our CG asset in Maya so that it appears in the same place with the same camera. So it's just a matter of kind of file exchange, getting stuff out of Unreal and into Maya, getting stuff out of Maya and into Unreal back and forth. So that's what we're going to be covering in the next video.